Hello, welcome to Willow Hill and everyone joining us for worship today. We are so blessed to worship with you. My name is Lee Hager. I'm the Director of Online Ministries and I am so excited to welcome you to this week's worship service with our guest speaker, Hasmin Holloway, delivering the message of Father's Love. If you are new here, welcome. We're so glad you're here and we would love a chance to get to know you a little bit better. So please consider filling out the digital connection card, which is linked in the video's description, or you can scan that QR code on your screen. Like I said, it gives us a chance to get to know you a little bit better and it's an opportunity for you to submit any prayer requests you might have so the staff can pray alongside you. If you're joining us from your television, we encourage you to pull out your cell phone or tablet and engage with us in the comments. We would love to chat with you there, hear anything you'd like, any insights you might have. And also, pulling out your cell phone or tablet gives you an opportunity to scan any QR codes that might be popping up on your screen. We also encourage you to share this worship service with anyone you think might be blessed by it. If you'd like to get to know Willow Hill a little bit more, you can check out our website, willowhill.org, or you can find us on social media through Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. At this time, we invite you to lift your voices as we sing our opening song.
Hello, friends. As we enter into a time of prayer, I'd like to invite you to just take a deep breath. Welcome the Spirit of God into your presence. I will pray a prayer for us, and at the end, we can join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Let us go to God. Holy and gracious God, we thank you today for our fathers. We thank you for the life that they have brought each of us. We thank you for the men in our lives who have loved us like a father, who have stepped up to father others, who have loved others so deeply. We thank you for the men in our lives who have inspired us, taught us, and loved us. We know that today is a complicated day for many. That Father's Day may not be the easiest day for those who are unable to have children or who desperately wish to adopt and are unable to, for those who have a difficult relationship with their father or with their children. It is a difficult day for those who have lost their father and miss them desperately or for fathers who have lost their children and miss them desperately. For these situations and others that make this day complicated, we pray, O oh God, that you would send your comforting spirit to be with those whose hearts are aching. We give thanks today for the men in our lives who have taught us to follow you closer. For the men in our lives who have been an example of your unfailing love. We give thanks for the wisdom and guidance we have gleaned from them. Help us to honor the legacy that we have been shown by these faithful men in our lives. We turn our lives, O oh God, over to you in the name of your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi friends, it's Miss Gina here, and it is time for Small Talk. I brought a special story to share with you today because today is Father's Day, right? So we celebrate the love that men in our lives have for us, and we celebrate the love that God the Father has for us. So let's see if we can read this story. Just Because You Are Mine. Now, it's a book by Sally Lloyd-Jones. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we're going to talk about it a little bit. It starts out with a daddy squirrel and a little squirrel. Little Red Squirrel and his daddy were playing in the big wood. Daddy, shouted Little Red Squirrel, look at me. And he scampered off. First, Little Red Squirrel showed his dad his super fast running. He ran between two elm trees, racing as fast as he could, faster than the wind. Have you ever raced to show somebody how fast you were? Little Red Squirrel, his daddy called after him. Did I tell you today that I love you? Because why? asked Little Red Squirrel. He was spinning now, faster and faster, round and round in circles. Daddy, said the spinning little red squirrel, do you love me because I'm fast? Then he fell over, of course, because he was so dizzy. No, his daddy laughed, picking him up. That's not why. And the book goes on and on, and Little Red Squirrel keeps trying to figure out why his daddy loves him so. And he shows him his special treasure of berries, and he brings them all, and he wonders if daddy loves him 
because he has all these berries and he's good at finding them and sharing them. But daddy says that's not why. And little red squirrel shows his daddy how high he can climb. And he climbs and climbs and he wonders when he gets all the way up there if daddy loves him so much because he can climb so high. But daddy still says, nope, that's not why. Now, Little Red Squirrel shows his daddy how he can balance. Squirrels can bravely balance from one end of a branch to another end. And he thinks, I'm so brave. Is that why, Daddy? Daddy still says no. So Little Squirrel keeps trying all sorts of things. And they have fun all day long. And he says, Daddy, I'm very handsome. Is that why you love me? Daddy still says, no, that's not why. Well, little squirrel was getting sleepy and he yawned and he reached up so daddy could carry him home. And he still says, daddy, I'm friendly. Is that why you love me? Daddy still says, no. And he kisses his little nose and says, that is not why I love you. And Daddy Squirrel tucks him into bed. And Little Red Squirrel just wonders. And Daddy says, you know what? You are fast. You are smart. You are brave. You are friendly. You are handsome. You're good at finding things. But that's not why I love you. And Daddy Squirrel leaned down and whispered in Little, little Squirrel's ear and says, no, little one, I love you just because you're mine. That's right. Little Squirrel didn't have to do or be anything for Daddy to love him. The Daddy didn't love him because he did things well or because of, of him being handsome or smart or brave. The Father Squirrel loved that little squirrel just because that little squirrel belonged to him. And that is how God the Father loves every one of you, every one of us. See, all of us have a Father in heaven, God, who loves us so much just because we are God's children. You are God's child and I am God's child. Now, we all have special men in our lives that love us too, right? You know, some of us have um, dads and stepdads. Some of us have uncles and grandpas and big brothers and all sorts of special men who love and care for us. But the most important father of all, the best love from any father is the love from God the Father who loves every single one of you just because you belong to God. And we can remember that love and try to share that love with other people. So maybe today, especially on Father's Day, you can find a way to show your love for your dad, your grandpa, your uncle, your big brother, your neighbor, any special men in your life that love you and care for you. Let's see if you can treat them extra special today and show them how you love for them too, the way God loves us. Let's put our hands together and say our sentence prayer. Dear God, thank you for your love and for all the men who love and care for us. Please help us show our love through our actions today and every day. Amen. See you next time. Well, today we once again have the opportunity to bring God's kingdom into our midst to help God build the kingdom of God right here. When you are able to give to Willow Hill, you are helping to give to that mission to partner with God to make a difference in the lives of those in our community and around the world. Each gift, each bit of generosity helps 
to change this world and to make it a better place and to make it more like the kingdom of God. And so we want to thank you so much for your generosity. You can give in multiple ways. There's a QR code on your screen that you can use. You can also use the link in the description of this video or if you'd rather mail in a check or drop it by the church office, that works as well. But know however you give that we are grateful for your generosity. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, 
May the words from my mouth and the meditation from all our hearts bring glory to you today. Amen. When you hear of the phrase, a father's love, what does it mean to you? Does it touch you? Does it bring great memories and not so great memories? Firstly, I would like to greet all the fathers, adopted fathers, surrogate fathers, and men who want to be fathers. A happy Father's Day today. Do you know that the history of Father's Day is connected to church? I thought that was so neat when I read about that history that in 1909, a lady named Sonora Smart Dodd was sitting in church listening to a sermon about Mother's Day. She thought to herself, well, geez, they celebrate Mother's Day. Why don't we celebrate Father's Day? You see, Sonora was a child and a daughter of a Civil War veterans, veteran who was widowed and who by himself reared six children. So she thought, I have to do something about father and for all fathers that I can touch. So in 1910, she decided during her father's birthday to celebrate the first Father's Day and also including some of the fathers around her village in Spokane, Washington. She actually wrote to President Coolidge to ask him to recognize Father's Day, but it was not until 1972 that President Richard Nixon recognized Father's Day every third Sunday in June. That was 50 years after Mother's Day was recognized. So see, a very good connection between a church sermon and Father's Day. So the question is, again, Father's love, what does it mean to you? I am going to talk to you a little bit about three kinds of father's love. The first one is for your own father. Today is Father's Day. Children, what did you tell your father today to recognize him and to celebrate him? A person named Benjamin Watson, and I'm going to read his description of a father's love because I don't want to forget one word of what he said. He said, a father's love, his love is sacrificial, patient, kind, humble, honest, forgiving, faithful, and selfless. It is constant and unchanging. Fathers, what do you think? Can you meet all of those words? When you think about father's love when you're growing up, what comes to mind? Is there a situation or a memory where it comes back to you so vividly, and you say, geez, that really shaped my life. That really helped me to become who I am today. I have a story for you. My father, my father was a very pious man. He didn't talk very much, 
But when he talks, we listened. But I knew he was a very just and loving man and disciplined us very well. There were three sisters, and having daughters in the Philippines is a hard job. One day, I may have been 10, 11 years old, my sister Olive is four years younger, and my sister Sherlane is six years younger than me. We heard that there was a movie playing in the big city, and a lot of our friends were going. We were poor, and we knew that it would be very hard to ask my mother money to go to that movie. She wouldn't have said no. So me, the smart eldest daughter, I thought, I'll ask Father. I'll ask Papa. He will give us money. If he has money, he will give us money. So the three of us talk, how are we going to approach this? So we went and said, Papa, we have something to ask. This is really important to us because all of our friends are going and we really, really want to go. We'll do anything if we could just go. He listened to what we wanted. We needed money to go to a movie, for a fare for the bus, and for little snacks in the movie house. He looked at us. Uh-oh, we said. That, I think that's a no. <laughs> he walked away, and we said, that's really a no. Then he came back, and he said to us, he sat down around us on the table, and he said, here is all the money that we have for the next week, for our food, for the things that we need. Put it in the table and said, it is all yours. You can decide what you want to do with it. A father's love. What story do you have? Being a father, I think, is a difficult thing. Being a father is a challenge. But a lot of fathers will tell you how beautiful and wonderful it is to be a father. But it has its challenges. I go back to Benjamin Watson. He had several questions to himself when he was rearing his children. How much his father love, father's love means to them. These are his questions, and I want you to listen to it and to ask yourself, do I ask these questions too? These are the questions. Do they know they are loved when they are being disciplined? Do they know they are loved when they are hurting? Do they know they are loved when my focus is on other important things? Do they know they are loved when they are confused? Do they know they are loved when they are failing? Benjamin Watson ends by saying, there are so many things a father loves gives, and so many things that a lack of it destroys. There are so many things that a father's love gives, and so many things that a lack of it destroys. What are you going to say to your father today? The second father that I am going to talk about is somebody that's always been overlooked. This is Saint Joseph, Jesus' adopted father. I live in San Jose, Negros Oriental, that means St. Joseph. 
Every town in the Philippines has a patron saint. Ours is Saint Joseph. I have told a lot of people before, I grew up a Catholic. And in the Philippines, as you have heard me say, when you are not Catholic, you are called, wait for it, a Protestant. So when somebody asked me if I was a Protestant, I said, what? So I was a Catholic, and every Sunday, we would go to church to Mass, and after the Mass, we would always sing the song about St. Joseph. O Senor San Jose, matarong kagayod ang imong kinapuhi santos gayod dinood. The song and the verses talks about who St. Joseph is. How wonderful father he was. How overlooked he was. He was just in the background. Does a lot of you know who St. Joseph is? By God's providence, he looked for a man to be Jesus' father on earth. And guess what? He chose Joseph. Joseph who is a faithful man, Joseph who believes in the Lord, who obeys the Lord, who loves Mary, who loved Jesus. He could have run away when he was told that Mary was going to have a child, not his. But he was there all the time, being with Mary. He was always there in the nativity scene. We don't hear about St. Joseph a lot, but he was chosen by God to be Jesus' father. I forgot about that song for a long time until I went to the Philippines just last May. I went to Mass with my sisters, and at the end of Mass, the priest had us sing the Senior San Jose song. And when we started singing, my heart was gripped by a force that I could not describe. Tears started falling. Then I looked at my sisters, and they were all the same. We were crying because that song was very important to us because we sang it as a family and because my father's name is Jose in honor of Saint Joseph. So think about the overlook Saint Joseph. Think about the chosen father of Jesus. If you read about him you will read the good things that he has done. He never talked about it. He never boasted about it. His father's love was deep inside his heart. So now we go to the third father we have. Our God, the Father. I'm going to read again what Benjamin Watson wrote about the father, what a father's love is. His love is sacrificial, patient, kind, humble, honest, forgiving, faithful, and selfish. It is constant and unchanging. At the end of Benjamin Watson's message, he said, no man, no father, human father, can do all of these things, all of these father's love words that he described. 
only God the Father can be the perfect Father for all of us. There was a big landmark study, a study by the Baylor University Institute for Studies for Religion. The study was done for three years. 1,700 people responded, and there were 400 questions. The question was, what do you believe is the kind of God your God is? The study found four different answers, and this survey is, was only in the United States. So these were the results of the survey. 31% of Americans believe that God is an authoritarian God. What it means is it's a God that is deeply involved in our lives and in world events. But this God can be angry and can punish anyone who is ungodly. The authoritarian God. 23% said they believe in a benevolent God. A God who is engaged in our daily lives and in the world events but a God who is a positive force, a God who is loving, and a God who does not like to punish, a God who forgives and who loves. 16% said they believe in a critical God. A critical God does not interact with the world, but is unhappy with current state of events, state of the world. And this God will exact divine judgment. 16% believe in a critical God. And the last 24% believes in a distant God, a, no, a God that does not interact with us or with our lives, a God that is not angry, but a God who is a cosmic force that set the laws of nature in motion. What do you believe? An authoritarian God? A benevolent God? A critical God? Or a distant God? God the Father, what is he to you? His Son, Jesus Christ. In John chapter 15, verses 1 to 8, tells us about God the Father. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, 
thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciple. God sent his only son, the best love ever, to save us. God, your Father. In 2008, I read a beautiful book called The Last Lecture, written by Randy Powes, who's a professor at Carnegie Mellon University. He was asked to give a lecture during a commencement exercise. Several months later, he found out that he had terminal pancreatic cancer. A year later, he passed away, but not before writing a book called The Last Lecture. You should check it out. In that book, Randy gives very common sense ways to live your life, whether how short it is or how long it is, and to live it fully. He was the um, husband of Jai, and they had three little children when he died. I want to share with you two of his points. The first one is not very much directly to being a father, but you will know the kind of man he is when I read to you the first one. The point is, make time for what matters. When Jai and I went on our honeymoon, we wanted to be left alone. Since my boss demanded a way for people to reach me, I recorded this greeting. Hi, this is Randy. I waited until I was 39 to get married, so my wife and I are going away for a month. I, don't, I hope you don't have a problem with that, but my boss does. Apparently, I have to be reachable. I then gave their names of Jai's parents and the city where they lived. If you call directory assistance, you can get their phone number. And then, if you can convince my in-laws that your emergency merits interrupting their only daughter's honeymoon, they have our number. We didn't get any calls. Time is all you have, and you may find one day that you have less than you think. Kind of a great man. Then this one is about a father's love. The title is Let Kids Be Themselves. Because I've been so vocal about my children's dreams, people have asked me about the dreams I have for my own kids. As a professor, I've seen how disrupted it can be for parents to have specific dreams for their children. My job is to help my kids foster a joy for life and develop the tools to fulfill their own wishes. My wishes for them are very exact and, given that I won't be here, I want to be clear. Kids, don't try to figure out what I wanted you to become. I want you to become what you want to become. And I want you to feel as if I am there with you. Whatever path you choose. A father's love. What does it mean to you? 
อาเมนมีเดอะลอร์ดบลสและปกป้องคุณมีเดอะลอร์ดส์เฟซชัยและรีดิเอตวิจอยเพราะคุณมีเขาแสดงให้คุณสวยงามเขาแสดงให้คุณมีสุขไปเลยนะไปเลยนะและเป็นพระรักของพระเจ้าต่อใคร Thank you for worshiping with us. Please enjoy this preview of our upcoming sermon series. Butterfly in the sky. One of the greatest gifts as Christians that we have ever been given is this book, the Bible, which tells us all about who God is and how much God loves us. But in particular, in the Gospels, we hear all about the stories of Jesus. What happened when he came and walked among us? The stories that he himself taught us, so that we could grow in our faith. These stories are precious because they help us even today grow in our faith and become closer to God. But you don't have to take my word for it. Come and find out for yourselves with our new sermon series, "Tell Me the Stories of Jesus."